if you haven't already, you're going to need to download and install Revit on your computer. Don't panic if you don't have a Revit license. You can download a free trial of Autodesk Building Design Suite, which includes Revit, from their website. And if you're a student, you can get free software for up to three years. So if you haven't got Revit installed yet, I suggest you hop over to their website now and sort that out. I'm using Revit 2017 for this course, and it would be great if you could too. Most of the functionality that we're going to cover is present in earlier versions of Revit, but the exercise files are not backwards compatible, so you won't be able to open them up unless you have Revit 2017. Whenever you start a new Revit project, you will use a template. This comes preloaded with all sorts of settings and content. Revit comes with four standard templates for different design disciplines, and there's nothing wrong with using these as a starting point. Revit project templates are great. They allow you to standardise styles, settings and information on all of your projects in the office. They also allow your documentation to have a common appearance, regardless of who in the office actually created the model. It's likely that your company will have its own Revit project template, which you should use as the starting point for all projects that you do in the office. However, I have developed a special Revit template for this course. We are going to use this as a starting point for building our model. This template incorporates a lot of the changes that most companies will make to a Revit template and you can download it from the course exercise files section. Once you've installed Revit and downloaded the template file, you're ready to go. So let's get started on creating a Revit project. Before we do anything, I have a few rules. You should always, always, always open Revit from the start menu or a desktop shortcut. Never try and open Revit by double clicking on a Revit file. This is a very good habit to get into because if you're ever working on a work shared file, you'll be locking out all of your colleagues if you double click on your Revit project to open it. They won't be able to save any of their changes. What we're going to do instead is we're going to go to the start menu and choose Revit 2017 from the list. Once Revit has opened, we can open an existing file by going to the application menu and choosing open, or you can make a new file by choosing new. Rule number two is this. Don't be tempted to click on any of the icons on the main Revit splash screen. Again, this is a good habit to get into if you're likely to be working in shared files. And again, instead, we'll always go to the application menu and choose open. Right, I think we're ready to get started. So I'm going to hop over into Revit and make sure to open Revit from the start menu or by double clicking on your desktop shortcut. What we need to do now is make a new Revit project. So I'm going to go to the application menu and choose new and project. We're going to use the course template file as a starting point for our project. Now the templates listed here are the standard Autodesk templates which ship with Revit. We're not going to use these, but instead we're going to browse for a template. Now you need to navigate to where you've saved the template file that you downloaded from the exercise files section of the website. I suggest you put all of your training materials in a folder somewhere on your computer so that you can access them later. The template file is called intro-template.rte. .rte is the extension that Revit uses for template files, as opposed to .rvt, which is the extension that Revit uses for project files. Once I've got to the folder with the template in, I'll press open, and you should see the name of your template file in the window here. Now all we need to do is press open, and you've got your blank Revit project. There won't be any model elements in here, but you will see some things. For example, these are our elevation markers. We need to be a little bit careful with any content that already exists in the view. For example, if I decided that I didn't want to see these elevation markers in the view, I might think it was a good idea to delete them. But if I try to delete one of these markers, I get a warning, which Revit does say I can ignore, but it's always best to read these things just in case. What this warning is telling me is that I'm about to delete a view called West. So actually what's happening is that I'm deleting the whole view, not just the elevation marker. I really don't want to be doing this unless I'm certain that the view isn't required. If I do delete the view, the whole thing will be gone. It's true that there's nothing stopping me from recreating the view and all of our model elements will still be there. But any annotation, any view specific overrides and all of the work that you've done to make that view look good would be gone. This is not what we want. So we need to think very carefully before we start deleting things. If I did want to get rid of them, instead I could hide them in the view. And I would do that by selecting them and then right clicking and choosing hide in view elements. If I ever wanted to show them again, I could click on the light bulb in the view control bar and reverse the process, this time choosing unhide in view. What I'd like to do now is to start setting up our project. And the first thing we need to do is set up the project information. 
To do this, I'm going to go into the Manage tab and I'm going to choose Project Information. You'll see that some of these fields are already populated with data. This is all part of the template file and means that you don't have to fill in the same data every time you start a project. The rest of the information is project specific and we can work through it all in order to complete it. The first box is building name and I'm going to write plural site stadium. In the author box, I'm just going to write my initials. I'm not going to do anything with the energy analysis settings for now and I don't know what the project issue date is yet, so I'll leave that one blank. Under project status, I'm going to write concept design. And in the remaining boxes, we can fill in the other details about the project and the client. Once I'm done, I'll press OK. The last thing I want to do is save the project. So I'm going to go to the application menu and choose save. Then I'll navigate to where I want to save the file and I'm going to give it a name and press OK. And now we've got the project set up, we're ready to move on to the next stage.